Hello and welcome. The topic for this video is who wrote the book of Matthew. Now, I know that may, may sound simple to some people, uh, being that it's named after Matthew. Um, but there are a lot of people out there, some skeptics and critics, that will tell you and tell us that it was not written by Matthew himself, but it was written by someone uh, in the 3rd century, more than 200 years after Jesus died. Uh, and these skeptics and critics will claim that Matthew didn't write it, but whoever did write it simply titled it Matthew, in hopes to uh, in hopes to give it some sort of legitimacy or to fool people in the third century into believing that Matthew himself had written it. Um, this is a this is a huge charge. This is a very important uh, challenge that we need to defend because if it's true, if it's true that Matthew didn't write it and that the the Gospel of Matthew was written in the third century, then it's not a very credible source for the life and teachings of Jesus. Um, Two hundred years is a long time. It's a long time for legend and myth to creep in and sort of cloud the facts and get mixed in with the with the information and the raw data. It's a long time for stories to get embellished. It's a long time for uh, for details to get missed and information to get lost. And so anything being written 200 years after the fact isn't nearly as credible as something being written maybe just a few years, just a few decades after the fact. So it's really important for us to know and have evidence that Matthew himself, him, Matthew himself was the guy who wrote the Gospel of Matthew at some point during the first century. Um, Matthew was one of the twelve disciples. Jesus hand-selected these twelve guys to mentor. He, uh, he taught these guys. He spent time with them for three and a half years. And there was no one in the first century who had more knowledge uh, about the life and ministry of Jesus than these twelve guys. And Matthew, having been one of the twelve disciples, uh, would have first-hand knowledge of the life and teachings of Jesus and would also be an eyewitness to the death and resurrection uh, of Jesus as well. So it's really important to know that Matthew did write this. Well, how do we know Matthew wrote it? There's some, there's some strong evidence. First, there are some historians that say he wrote it. Um, there's a guy named Papias of Asia Minor who is a very well-known, well-respected uh, historian and scribe from the latter part of the first century and early part of the second century. And Papias of Asia Minor uh, he is writing in the early part of the second century, and he says um, that he knew that Matthew uh, wrote the Gospel of Matthew. Pretty simple. Um, you know, we don't necessarily have the evidence or the information that he would have had in front of him, but whatever information he had in front of him, it led him to believe that Matthew absolutely did write the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, 180 years later, uh, Arrhenius of Gaul also backs us up. He is a historian, and he says the that... Uh, that the Synoptic Gospels, which are Matthew, Mark, and Luke, were absolutely written by Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He also contends that Luke wrote the Book of Acts. Uh, Pantanus, who is another 2nd century historian, uh, talks about how the information in front of him led him to believe that Matthew was the writer of the Gospel of Matthew, and Oregon of Alexandria made, a similar, uh, made similar writings and statements. And so here we have four different 2nd century historians writing separately of themselves, uh, separately from each other, that that they knew that the information that they had led them to believe that Matthew was the writer of Matthew, and so these critics would say, well, it wasn't written until the year you know 250 A.D. or so. Well, at least a hundred years before that, we've got four separate guys um, saying, hey, no, that's not accurate, uh, or saying we know that there's a guy named Matthew who lived in the first century, who walked with Jesus, who wrote uh, the gospel according to Matthew. Um, there's a guy, and there's a the second thing we know is that there were there was a precedent for the book of Matthew being quoted as the word of God in the early part of the second century. There's a guy named um, Ignatius who died in 115 A.D. and before he died, he was writing to some of the Christians in his church. He was a pastor or a church leader in the late part of the first century, early part of the second century, and in his writings he quotes the book of Matthew as if it's the word of God. Now, the tradition was you didn't necessarily just quote, I mean, if a book was written last week, you didn't just, uh, you know, quote it as if it was the Word of God. No. Early church leaders were very, very careful and meticulous to make sure that they never quoted anyone uh, or contended that anyone was uh, scripture or that anything was inspired by God unless they, unless they were, they had several decades um, of proof for, that for many years they could point to the fact that, hey, this these words have power, these words are accurate, they're authentic, and we believe that they are inspired by God. This is inspired scripture. And so we have evidence and precedent for a pastor or an early church leader before he dies in 115 AD 
to already be quoting Matthew um, as the Word of God. This is huge evidence to prove the Gospel of Matthew was clearly written several decades before uh, Ignatius wrote these words. And so this pushes us back to somewhere between 60 AD and 80 AD. Um, second, you know, the, the third item is that the Greek style of writing is very similar to other first century writings. The book of Matthew was written in Greek, but it was written with a Hebrew style, a Hebrew poetic cadence. Uh, this is very similar to a lot of the other Jews writing in Greek during the first century. Um, so clearly the person who wrote the book of Matthew would have been a first century Jew um, who was very familiar with Hebrew poetic cadence, uh, but also would have been familiar with Greek, the trade language of that day. Uh, clearly, uh, someone writing in the second or third century would not have written it with that style. Um, the last and most important piece of evidence, I think, that makes the book of uh, Matthew clearly a reputable book written by the Apostle Matthew himself is the very fact that there were no contention in the first or second century about the, about the authenticity of the book of Matthew. You know, l let me give you an example. If I were to start passing out a book um, that, cl that says, you know, the history of Microsoft, you know, according, uh, according to Bill, and I start, I write this book and I start passing it around and I start telling everyone, hey, Bill Gates wrote this book back in 1988, 89. Uh, he, he wrote it and he talked about, you know, starting Microsoft in the early 80s and what it was like to start this company from the ground up. And, and I start passing it around. Uh, there might be someone and I start, you know, passing it around all around the United States. Someone might stand up and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This, this book was not written by Bill Gates in 1989. Uh, and they would they would contend they would challenge it and it would be up to me to prove that I got it from Bill Gates in 1989. Uh, well, this is pretty much what skeptics want you to believe. They want you to believe that sometime in the middle of somewhere in the middle of the third century, right around 250 A.D. or so, somebody we don't know who wrote a book about the life of Jesus and embellished a bunch of the stories and missed, messed up a lot of the details, and they called it the Gospel of Quoting Matthew and they started passing it around and start saying, "Hey, hey, check this out." Uh, there's this is the life. This was written by Matthew 200 years ago. Somebody in the second, in the third century would say, uh, "No, that's not accurate. There's no evidence for that. There's no evidence for anyone contending or making these claims whatsoever." The other thing is, if there's a book written in the first century not by Matthew, written by somebody else, and they start passing it around and saying and lying and saying, "Oh no, no, Matthew wrote it absolutely." Um, Matthew was still alive, and, and many of the many of the early church leaders like Polycarp and Jerome that lived in the latter part of the first century. Some of those guys they knew the apostles. Specifically, Polycarp was the leader of the early church in the in, in the latter part of the first century. He was friends with several of the apostles. And if there's someone else around there who wrote this book and claimed that Matthew wrote it, but actually Matthew hadn't written it, and the book starts getting passed around all around Israel and gets really popular and gets spread around. Polycarp or someone who knew better would have stood up at some point in the first or second century and said, no, 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 this guy's a liar. This book was, was not written by Matthew. This guy's a liar. Um, or maybe someone who, who didn't believe in Jesus, who wanted to discredit the Christians, who wanted to make the Christians look bad, somebody would have said, no, no, he's a liar. And this happens today in our society all the time. You know, if someone wants to discredit someone who writes a book or someone who says something, somebody in the society stands up and challenges them on it. Well, you know what? There is no challenge whatsoever. There is zero reputable uh, historical evidence at all that there was ever any challenge or any contention that Matthew wrote the Gospel of Matthew. There is no contention in the first or second century, ever. And so the very fact is this. There are four historians to back it up. There's precedences for, pastor quoting the book, for pastors quoting the book of Matthew as the Word of God. The Hebrew uh, uh, poetic cadence with which the book of Matthew was written proves that it was most likely written in the first century. Um, and the very fact there was no contentions by anyone in the first or second century ever contending that the book of Matthew was written by the Apostle Matthew all prove beyond a shadow of a doubt uh, that really Matthew himself, the Apostle who spent time with Jesus, is the guy who writes the book of Matthew. And he says, hey, listen, guys, I was there. Here's what happened. And we know that the book of Matthew is reliable and we can trust it today.